afternoon. Thank you for joining the Women in the Law UK webinar. Thursday, the 7th of May, the day before V-Day celebrations in our house. I'm Sally Penny. I've got a fantastic expert today. If you haven't heard her before, you'll be blown away. I see Sean is on, so Sean will remember Sue well from the conference. I'm going to hand over to Sue. She's one of our endorsed amazing trainers and to just teach us a few things, right? Because networking is like death. And especially those of us who are barristers uh, have to network with solicitors. How awful. And you solicitors have to do business development. So let's hope that whatever Sue has to say, she's not in law, but she was a magistrate, um, is helpful to all of you. So Sue, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to say hello, everybody. Yeah, I was a magistrate. So I'm, I'm still a magistrate. I'm sorry, I'm, not, sorry. I'm still, I'm just not sitting at the moment. I'm having a rest. I've done 18 years. So, I mean, I could have done murder for that and still got out of faster. Um, so 18 years of sitting on a bench, free of charge, um, every <laughs> Monday. Um, it was just a lot. And for the last seven years of my 18 years, I was on a really specialising on domestic violence court. So that, you know, that really drains you and it's an awful thing. Um, and so when I moved house, I also had a bit of a rest. So um, thankfully, um, you know, I still keep my eye on what's going on in the legal side, but, uh, but no, I'm not sitting at the moment. Um, so I run seven businesses. <sighs> so, and out of the seven at the moment during COVID, I'm actually still running four of the seven. So three of them are not working um, and we'll pick up a bit later on and, and the four are. So uh, leadership and management training is my initial company um, and now I'm an international trainer and speaker on networking and in fact next week I was supposed to be traveling to talk to uh, 2,600 people in um, Lisbon at a, at a conference. So of course all that's cancelled. They booked me for exactly the same day next year so i just have to sort the flights out now um i have a manufacturing business so i build hydroponic gardens which might seem strange for a magistrate to be involved in hydroponics because usually i imprison people involved in hydroponics um, and i actually manufacture hydroponic gardens for people um, and i've got some businesses that also run from home so how do i do all of that well most of it is done actually through networking because I don't have time to do much else um, when I'm busy running the businesses. Uh, and I think one of the key things I'm going to talk to you about today, even in these times, in these COVID times, I, all over the world, because I notice you're all from all over the world, um, is, is the key issue of visibility, which is as m even more important now that you can't get out and about and see people, is to actually be visible on systems and, and connecting with people. That's really, really important because eventually, and we never know where it's going to be, this whole world will, will change a bit. I'm not sure how it will change. But when we come back out of the other side of it, the work that you've done now during this process um, will actually stand you in better stead later. And I'll explain about that. So I'm going to share a screen with you. So I'm going to disappear off for a little while just while I get the screen together. So... Uh, there we are, and I'm going to put it onto slideshow. There. Oops, I've gone one too far. Okay, so call it, I'm going to call it net zooming. So that's what you're doing today. Actually, every single one of you um, is actually remote networking today because the links that we've got um, that we make today, uh, it's, it's work. Yeah. So it's just networking, but from home in a different way. And, you know, I'm learning more about this in net zooming all the time. I'm really quite enjoying it because the other week I actually went into um, little rooms. So we did like speed networking. It's a bit like speed dating. Uh, and it's really quite exciting. So, um, so I'm really grasping all the opportunities to network. So let's have a look at how this uh, networking thing goes. Well, first of all, we talked about it. Visibility is the key because you can't go out and about see people, you can't go to networking events um, and, and join in at a room. But what you can do is do exactly as you've done today, is join in on things that are going on, get your name out there, get people finding out who you are. And I've got a little note there for uh, Morgan uh, that I'm gonna to talk to you a bit later on. So put in your chat details, your contact details, because something you said there, and I wanna get in touch with you. 
Okay, so visibility is absolutely key. Nobody can see you now unless you physically go and do something. So let's go back to what is networking. And usually when I ask that question at a, at a seminar, people will say, you know, it's, uh, it's meeting people, it's talking to people, um, it's building relationships, it's finding some connections, um, which are absolutely right. What networking isn't is selling. And I don't want you ever uh, on any Zooms or any way that you're dealing with business at the minute or even later on to actually sell your products, your services, your organization to anybody. Do not do it in bad practice. What we are doing when we're out there is actually we are selling, but we're selling ourselves. And that's the key thing. But when you get out there, it's about building those relationships. So how does that start? Well, we start with meeting, turning up at an event or on a Zoom, talking to people, um, being interested, asking questions, and all of that is about building relationships. And from the relationship, we'll start to spot opportunities where we can actually do some work together or link or, or join in um, or just take that relationship further on. So networking is not selling, it's about building relationships. And if we remember that, it's exactly the same um, as the relationships we have with any new organization we buy from. So in this COVID world that we're in at the minute, we've probably been buying a lot more online, either through eBay or Amazon or through a company you've never used before. What, you've never had that link with an organization before, so what are you, what are you doing to decide that that organization is a good company to do some business with, to buy something from? So that takes us to the next week because building relationships is about making that connection, that joining in, reaching, linking to somebody. And we do that with three key principles of networking. You need to get to know the organization of the person. Hopefully you'll like them and will trust them to do business with. Now, when we can't meet somebody, can't see them, we're still going to build up that no like and trust that relationship. And online, if you're ordering something from a, an organization you've never ordered before, we do that these days by looking at what other people have said about them. So we have a look at the reviews. And if somebody has got really rubbish reviews, you think, or a hotel's got really rubbish reviews, you think, hmm, actually, they're not so good. I, don't, I won't go there. So even in the world of technology, we still go value this no like and trust. So when we're networking, that's the key thing. People need to get to know you. Hopefully they'll like you and maybe they'll trust you to build that relationship or to do some business with. And these are the pillars of networking. And um, the first book ever to write about networking was written in 1932. Uh, now, in that book, if you read it, there is not one reference to the term networking, because networking hadn't been invented then. But this book was written in 1932 by a guy called Dale Carnegie. He wrote the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And, you know, that book from 1932 is as valuable today when we're building relationships with people than it ever was when it was written. And all the principles of networking actually come out of that book, even though it never mentioned networking. It's the fundamental basics of getting to know, like, trust people, building those relationships that will not last just two minutes, but things that will build relationships that will last for a long time. Now, I've known Sally for a few years, and actually the very first time we met, I delivered a little training program to a, a, a law group over in Manchester. And then, oh, probably about two or three years later, she came back on and said, hey, can you remember you did that session for us? If I was rubbish that day or I didn't get to, uh, she didn't get to know life and trust me, she would never have phoned up and no. then I'd never be involved. So it's really, really quite important that things we do now has a lasting um, impression later on. So relationships. In this COVID, this is your time to start and 
if you work on it now, you'll build a stronger relationship with people uh, and, and that will be the right way to go um, as we come out of it at the end. So how do we do that? Well, the key thing is to be interested, not interesting. And this is a big fundamental difference in building a relationship because if you're interested in somebody, you'll be asking questions. Oh, why did you decide to do law? What got you into that? How, why did you decide to join that firm? What got you involved in? What got you interested in such and such? You know, how long did you do that? What did you do before? All of these sorts of things, if you're asking people questions and being interested, the funny thing is, they'll think you're interesting. And they'll think, oh, what a really interesting person. So let me tell you a story. I, I, I work quite a lot in Manchester. And one, uh, well, sorry, I work a lot in London and I used to live just outside Manchester in Bolton. And uh, I was on this train one day uh, and we were flying about like, 120 mile an hour from, from London to, to Manchester. And I met a guy called Chris and um, he looked a bit perplexed. And I said to him, I said, oh, are you going to work or are you traveling home? He said, oh, traveling home. I said, oh, so it sounds like you're looking forward to it. He said, yeah, he said, I've had a real week this week. And, I, and so I chatted about it, found out that he was just setting up a major new bank in London, a brand new bank. And uh, so we chatted away. We got a couple of things in common. And there was a, a particular need for his son who was going to university and, and reading law in um, Leeds. Um, his, his son needed something. I said, well, I can sort that out for you. So we, we linked him together. Now I never saw Chris again for probably about five years. And one of my one of my friends sent me a message and said, So I'm looking for somebody that works at a bank that's really into helping youngsters learn about how money works. Do you know anybody? And I thought, gosh, I remember Chris. So I went on to face uh, onto LinkedIn. And I sent a message and also said is, hi, Chris, it's Sue, Sue Tonks. You might not remember me. It's a long time ago, but we were on a train and we talked about such and such, such and such. And he came back and he said, yes, Sue, of course I remember you. How many businesses are you now running at the moment? And I thought, wow, after all that time, I remembered that. So I linked the two people together, do you know, and that was five years and he still remembers. It's what you do now makes the difference later. So always be interested, not being interesting. If you're using the word I a lot, I did this, I did that, I'm doing that next, I'm interested in whatever, then you're in the interesting bit. So questions to ask them when you're talking to somebody, they're called small talk. You know, normally we talk about the weather and most of you today, didn't you do that? You're all grateful for the weather. I thought that's really interesting. So, the small talk. So how did you get started? What gave you the idea to, to set up that business? Or what, got you, what got you into it being interested in the law? Or what did you do before that? So loads of things. It's just about being, and, and you know, we're all girls on here, yeah? It's using the thing that we do best, which is just chatting to people. Because when we're chatting to people, hey, they'll chat back and they'll tell us all sorts of things. And then it will be a lot easier for us to spot those opportunities to take that conversation a little bit further. So if you want these slides at the end of the day, I can see that Penny's there, uh, that Sally's there taking loads of uh, pictures. Well, you know, I'll send her the slides. So if you send me an email to Sue, Sue Tonks on the bottom of the screen, .co.uk, any of you, I'll send you the slides. It's okay. And that'll save you, you can concentrate on the, on the pictures then. The next question people always ask is, oh, what do you do? And do you know we're absolutely rubbish at answering this question? And the worst thing will be lawyers, barristers, accountants, they're all rubbish at it. But you say, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm an accountant. Well, what your mind thinks then is, oh, boring. Or, oh, what do you do? I'm a barrister. Oh, yeah. And so we back off because people really don't know a lot about that or, you know, it seems difficult to say, oh, well, tell me about it. So an easy way to get people to understand what you do, because, you know, even in the law, there are so many different aspects of the law. There's commercial law and there's civil law and uh, criminal law and 
all sorts of things. We've got somebody in there in finance today and all sorts of different aspects. But it's really difficult just in one word to explain to people the exact area that you're working on. So the easiest thing to do is to say, uh, when somebody says, oh, what do you do? You say, well, you know when? And then you start to describe a little bit and give a bit of context. So I'd say something for this particular job today. I'd say, you know when, you know when people are new to their, their industry, like lawyers and solicitors or barristers, and they have to attend events, and they're really not sure how to join in, how to talk to people, um, how to build up conversations. Well, I help um, barristers and, and legal people and professionals to become more effective and confident networkers. And as a result, they build better relationships and maybe do more business. So it's just creating a sentence. So you all start with, you know, but you know when. This gives context. So if I said, you know when multinational organisations want to buy other multinational organisations? That context is, I work in a financial environment with international major organisations. So it sets a, con a context on which the person operates. If I said, you know when businesses first start, small businesses, and they need a bit of help and support, right at the early days to set up systems that says exactly the same it could be the same type of business advisor but the context the context is totally different says i work with small startup businesses so it always allows that first bit allows people to get a bit of a context about where you operate and what sort of work you do and then the next line says well i help people, organisations, defendants, whatever. And that shows the people that you work with. And then we just choose one of the next four, two, with, by, or when. So I help, I help the professional people to become more effective communicators or by showing them how to work a room or how to walk into a room and identify people to talk to or with their skills or when they need to. So only one of those has to get really boring. And then the final bit is, and as a result, they do to do to do. So this is the result of your actions. So the first bit gives context. The second bit says, this is who I work with, who I want to work with. This is what you do. And the final bit is the result of your actions. And it just makes it so easy for people to just understand a lot more about what you do and then they can be more interested in what you do rather than fight against a job to uncle. There are some big don'ts when we're networking. So do not send strangers emails, WhatsApps or messages and, and ask them to do business or, you know, you know oh, I'm, I'm just setting up such and such, I thought you might be interested, um, you know, will you email me on forever? You haven't built up any relationship, they are strangers, this is not the way to do it. Please do not link in with LinkedIn and try and sell them. I don't know how many organisations over this COVID time have asked to link in and then straight on they Zoom straight in to try and sell me a product or service or whatever it is that they're doing. Don't sell on Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter. To get an idea now, don't sell. It's about building relationships, and that's really important. Whatever you're doing on any of the social media um, uh, uh, platforms, if you need to spend a bit of time with somebody. So I actually never link in with anybody that I've never met. Yeah, me because, too. Because I, you know, I don't know who they are. And if anybody else looks and says, oh, that person must be okay, because Sue's linked to them, and I've never met them before, they might do business with somebody that I don't know I can trust. So for you lot, if you decide you want to link in with me, you need to put a special code on today because I won't link in with you if you don't put the code on. And just on the message, don't send me the ordinary message. Send me a message that just says the word Manchester on it. And if you've got the word Manchester on, I'll know exactly where I've met you today and I'll have seen you and with a bit of luck, I'll find out a little bit about you and that would make it easy for me to link in. But don't just do all of that and link in and try and make connections with people that you haven't yet got to know, like, and trust. 
I found some really nice ways that people have connected with me over this last few weeks. So I don't know this lady called Emma Sansom. She sent me a message and she said, hello Sue, I've written a blog called why it's even more important to keep on marketing through COVID-19 to, to support fellow business owners during the difficult times and to make use of the quiet period we find ourselves in. Shall we connect so I should share it with you? And I thought, wow, isn't that really nice? First of all, she's asked permission. She's just not whizzed something straight off to me. And, you know, she said, can I share it with you? I think that's absolutely ideal. You know, always ask permission. If you ask permission to do something, you'll never be a pest. So will it be okay if I link to such and such? Will it be okay if I join you with the, the next webinar? Will it be all right if I share something with you? And if the person says yes, then you could go ahead. If you just go and bang stuff out to them and they haven't set asked for it, then you're just being a pest. The other thing that she's done is she's given some interesting facts. Or she's, and she's got some things on there. I think, hmm, actually, that might be quite useful to have a look at. I think I'll join her and see what she's up to. Or build up an interest. You know, hmm, sounds like this girl's got some really good ideas. And so there you can make a better decision. And I thought that was a really good way to connect with somebody. And she would only then connect with the people that said, yeah, I think that's a great idea. This is a legal one that I saw. This is a girl I network with in my networking group over in, in Warwickshire. And she's, um, uh, she uh, specialises in um, family law. And as we know, with coronavirus, there's an increase in domestic violence at the moment where people are stuck in their homes and they can't get out and they're in a bad situation. And so she's written some um, uh, advice about that. Uh, and that popped up on one of the messages. And I thought, what a nice way. Because sometimes when we're giving people information, tips, advice, um, a, bit of, a bit of knowledge about something, it's really good. It says, look, I am knowledgeable. Uh, this is a skill of mine and this is something that you might find useful. So I thought that was a really nice way for her to share that. Another friend of mine, a totally different sort of thing, um, she sent this out because somebody had delivered her some nice fresh veg and fresh um, bread uh, and she popped that out onto the, the site and said, oh look what's just been delivered to me. As a result of that I checked up with this Ruth Redgate and from that message going on to Facebook, do you know her, her business went up by 190% over the next three days? And I thought, what a really nice way. Because this told me that it isn't what you do directly that also can have an effect on your business. It's what other people say about you. And that's really, really important. So, you know, I got this uh, information the other day from a friend of mine. She's a specialist in such and such thought it might be useful for you all to look at. And because it's come from one person to another, somebody you know, like and trust, just about somebody else, it means that, uh, you know, that link's more secure. I thought that was a really nice way. This one, I am, do you know, I am not interested in sugar, sugar craft roses in any way, but, you know, lots of people put in on things that people might be interested in and um, information hints tips sharing bits of some skill that they've got with other people it's not pushing it down the throat but it's allowing people to think oh actually oh, I never thought of that I might have a look at that okay so I just thought I'd choose lots of different things that are happening so please do not sell what we are doing uh, now is looking at different types of networking because we've got the Facebook, the Twitter, the LinkedIn, we've got NetZooming, which I love. Facebook Lives are going crazy at the moment. And these are all ways of, of reaching an audience and letting them know a little bit about what you're doing. And don't be shy of things like Facebook Live. If you've got uh, six easy ways to revise for your exams, get it out there on Facebook Live. Set up your own NetZooming. Pull it put your piece of information onto LinkedIn because that's how people are sharing information at the moment and that's how we're networking. Totally different to other networking situations. 
The other thing I'm always telling people is to actually network with your existing customers. So if you've got existing customers, the important thing is touch base with them or people that you've been to college with or been on a course with or places that you've worked on your work experience. Link back with them at this point. Just say, hi, I was just thinking about such and such the other day and I thought of you. I just wondered how you're doing in these COVID times, how you're getting on, how's things going for you? And making that link to people now brings you back into their environment. Um, and when you do that, they think, oh, but that really nice of them to think about me. Now your profile has been upped a bit for when we get back out of that COVID situation. And that's happened to me loads of times recently. Um, I posted something, um, uh, a little Facebook live on my um, Facebook, and it linked somebody to say, oh, yeah, oh, I forgot Sue did that. I'll get Sue to come and do um, a webinar for us. And I got a webinar. And this morning, out of the same process, um, I did a podcast. And to be honest, secret. I know the first po podcast I really really enjoyed it so I'm dead excited anyway it was on growing hydroponic gardens so growing hydroponic veg so a bit different from today so anything you've got stories little stories online things that you're looking at information tips these are all ways of getting that visibility out and you never know where it might lead to next so help don't sell we're in the process of helping people out at the minute giving them a helping hand making connections with them just seeing how they are point them to an, an article that you read that might be useful to them something that you know i've just read this the other day and thought it might be of interest to you these are all really fabulous ways to make those connections and get a little bit more visible to people and again it's not selling but it's showing that you care. I think that's really, really important at the moment. Okay, so back to visibility. What are people seeing of you? Yeah. So when they look on podcasts, what are they seeing of you? What are you responding to? Are you putting little messages down in the chat box? Are you, when you get the opportunity to say a little bit about yourself, representing yourself in the right way? What are you saying about yourself when somebody looks at you and thinks, hmm, so yesterday I was on a webinar and there's a lady that uh, is really good at, um, at marketing. So she does lots of, lots of social marketing um, for businesses. And, you know, she has a tremendous difficulty managing simple things on, um, on the, the Zoom meeting. Um, and she just, there was just certain things about her. And I thought, oh, I don't know, because nothing you're saying to me and nothing I'm seeing at the moment is giving me confidence that you know what you're about and what you're doing. And I thought, well, oh, what a shame because this is a really good opportunity for her to really have things you know, professional and, and right. And she just missed that plot completely. So think about what you're saying about yourself um, and, and how you're coming over to people. Join in on other people's Zoom meetings. This is a good opportunity. There's loads of stuff out there at the minute that, that's free um, that you can join in on. I was well, I jumped in on one for the Chamber of Commerce yesterday, and I thought, it, and it was about the legal aspects of what's going to happen after COVID with contracts of employment. And I thought, wow, fabulous! I'll join in on that. I, it's nothing to do with me, but you never know what I might pick up. Uh, and also, I got the opportunity to say a couple of things and respond to some um, uh, messages that came up on there. So take the opportunity. Respond on the call. Don't just sit there and, and, and do nothing. Okay? Make notes of the other people on the call. So now you should have had a piece of paper and you've written Alex Pearson's name down, Amalia Elbows, Rebecca Penfold's name. And later on, you can join those people. And especially the ones that are not in the UK, to think, wow, what are you doing over in? What are you doing in New York? Yeah. Um, so link yourself to what they've said um, on the Zoom call. You know, I, I liked how you said about such and such. I thought that was a really good point. Because people like to be seen, that they, that to know that they've been heard, mentioned and understood. And Rebecca Penfold's really excited now because I've just mentioned her twice. So there we have it, and she's smiling. Look at that. 
the next thing to do is once you make connections with people is follow up i'm going to come to that loads of times visibility follow up visibility follow up so here we go be brave though why not try running some sessions and meetings yourself you see a while ago sally penny could not run zoom meetings and now she still can't run zoom meetings but she's a bit more practiced at it yeah and i've noticed over time the professionalism has improved not a hairstyle today because that's gone all over the place but the professionalism because now she's got boards behind her and all sorts of stuff and uh, she was just talking about, I had washing behind me the other day, so now I'm behind curtains. So even I'm getting more professional. But why not run your own little meetings? Get some people that you know and say, listen, I'm gonna run a Zoom on such and such a thing. And um, just get, get your audience together. So when you do that, create a fabulous title to help or inform people. Invite people with a reason. You know? I'm, I'm running a Zoom on such and such, would you like to join it? Yeah. Um, have a brief plan visible to you, but don't read it. So on the wall at the side of me here, I actually have um, uh, my Zoom plan for the session I ran uh, yesterday. Um, so I'm not having to read it, but it's there just in case I need it. And in front of me today, I've got my notes with my slides just there. So I know what's coming up before you see it. It's just a little bit of professionalism. Um, prepare slides or just speak people love seeing people and uh, one of the things I struggled with right at the start was I've got these people and I'm not with them and um, but now I can see you all down the side I can see that you're all still there and you're all awake which is brilliant and um, include people and get feedback from people so ask them questions um, I know it's going to be a little bit difficult for today unless you put into your um, chat box but I can't see your chat box for a minute while I've got my do session up so but I'll catch up with it later follow up individually with thanks and find, start to find out about people so the other day I was doing a zoom in our for the um, SEMA Chartered Institute of Management Accounts and a few people contacted me afterwards and I found out loads about them um, and, and where they're up to in the jobs and, and the, the studying and things and now we can have a proper conversation so this is my preparation for a zoom call um, so this is one that i did for sally actually a few weeks ago it's my time management and organization one so that sits on my wall at the side to help me and remind me um, what i need to talk about there's a little chap in the middle of that uh, which you're going to meet later there he is so this is Gollum from lord of the rings you all know Gollum. not if you know Gollum from lord of the rings yeah and here he is, live version. Okay. Now, Gollum's very important because, first of all, when we go in, in the real world, when we go networking, lots of people will think, oh, I don't, I don't know whether I want to go there. And all these people I don't know. And what happens if nobody talks to me? What happens if I'm stuck on my own? What happens if I get stuck with a boring person? That's, and, and so they'll change their mind and not want to go. So Gollum is in, for those that know about him, Gollum is in two books and four films. And all he does in two books and four films is have an argument with himself because there's two sides to Gollum. There's good Gollum and bad Gollum. They've got different names. Good Gollum and Schmeagol. Now, good Gollum says, yes, yes, let's go networking. Let's meet some people. Let's build some relationships. We like his networking. Yes, we like his talking to people. Yes. And bad Gollum says, oh, so he likes his going to strangers, talking to people. What happens if I'm on my own? Oh, what happens if I'm with a boring person? Oh, I don't like it. I'll go home instead. I like his going home. So it's that argument we have with ourselves. We do that in networking at the front end when we don't turn up at the event, or we don't, we decide not to go on a Zoom call. You know, oh, the sun's shining outside. Got that Zoom call from four till five today. Uh, yeah, it might be boring. I think I'll go and sit outside instead. So it's that big argument in our minds. So we do the same with follow up because we've met somebody, could be online, could be face to face, and you think, mm, I really need to follow them up. I really need to get in touch with that person. 
Yeah, because it, it really helped. And then Bob goes and says, oh, what if they don't remember me? What if, what if they say no? What if they don't link with me? Oh, don't like sis, don't like sis following up. No, I'll Google instead, like sis Google. So again, it's about making sure that when you've linked with people, you do the follow up afterwards. Because people will remember you when you've connected with them. And what you need to say is, you know, there's Alex Pearson. She says, hi, Sue, it's Alex, Alex Pearson. We were on that call the other day with such and such. Listen, loved your impersonation of Gollum. Yeah, so what, what, what other businesses are you in? And then suddenly we're in a conversation. So you're using what you know with somebody to make that, to make that next bit of a link. So this is one of my favorite sayings and it's by Maya Angelou. She said, long after people have forgotten what you talked about, they will always remember how you made them feel. And these days in COVID, it's just as important today that, that you make the right impression on people because they will remember how you made them feel. So Annie says, you know, she mentioned all these people, but she's never mentioned my name on that webinar. Yeah. And that might make her feel upset or oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not so keen or whatever. But you turn it around. So whatever you do, make sure that if that person ever has contact with you again, they remember how you made them feel. Just by being interested, just making that connection with people. Asking how they're doing in the COVID world. Yeah, how, what the, what's the, the plans for getting out of it. Really, really quite important. So I finished with some of my ideas. And what I'd like to do now is I'm gonna, gonna stop this slide. I'm gonna come back on to answer some questions and deal with any other things on networking that you want to take on or ask as a result of what you've just seen. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to stop sharing. Just before you, you do it, can we um, give you a virtual clap and then I'll ask the first two questions. Can we all do a virtual clap for Sue, please? Awesome, that was really, really good. Sue's got a book coming out called, Can I Have a Word? Um, you know, she's told us not to sell, but I'm selling her. Um, and uh, I can't wait to read the book. Uh, she's written other books uh, before. Uh, she's a fantastic trainer, you know, global. So I really trust what she says. And I'm so grateful she's given up her time um, to be on here um, tonight. If you've missed any of the Lunch and Learns, go on the website and press the YouTube icon and you can watch them all again. The podcast is out this week with Stephanie Boyce. I, Stephanie Boyce, who's the president, vice president of the Law Society. She'll be president next year. She's the first black woman to hold such a post. So please listen to it. It's really inspirational and like it. Absolutely.